Welcome back to Flux City uh, in real life. And this is where we basically highlight uh, a number of things that uh, are happening throughout the city by amazing founders and amazing companies. And today we're with uh, Citizen Robotics and we're literally standing in the first 3D printed home in the city of Detroit, uh, which is pretty cool stuff. And I'm talking with Tom who actually founded Citizen Robotics. Tom, how you doing? Hey, thanks for having me. Tom Woodman, uh, I'm the executive director of Citizen Robotics and also its founder. Uh, founded this uh, company three years ago alongside my daughter, uh, who's the co-founder and communications director. Evelyn. Nice. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be uh, kind of touring this 3D printed house. We're also going to have an opportunity to uh, tour their warehouse. And uh, with that being said, let's get right to it. You know, we're, we're, st we're standing in the... Uh, the, the project um, and obviously you know you're you're still working on you know getting this this project um, finished right so what does that look like are we still going to have exposed walls uh, of this format um, are you thinking about adding drywall um, you know what are the floors going to look like uh, so on and so forth so this small home will be um, just on a slab okay so this will be a concrete floor uh, polished concrete stained in, uh, and polished um, these walls will be uh, plastered, so they'll just be, you know, normal-looking flat walls. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, we're, we're right now in the great room. The kitchen's over here, a galley kitchen to our left. This uh, part of the home is going to continue to be vaulted. It'll have um, uh, just drywall on the gable ends and the, uh, and the roof here, on the ceiling, I should say. Mm. And then starting from this point back, then we have a, a, an eight foot high ceiling. So from this point back, it's a, a normal ceiling, which will nice. give a little opportunity for some storage up top. Nice. In this case, all of the, um, uh, all of the installation is at the perimeter. On the roof here, these are these, are these uh, deep um, sit panels. Hmm. So like a plywood and foam sandwich, yeah. which uh, gives you an R42 on the roof. So this is actually what the roof is, is made of right now? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's up there. And this is also digitally fabricated. So it's made in a factory in Michigan huh. where they have a panel press. And then they, so they make the sandwich and then they push it to a giant uh, CNC machine, a computer numerically controlled saw, basically. Nice. And that cuts the, all of the pieces so that when they come to the site, they're exactly cut for where they need to be. Mm. And it's a simple assembly operation. So we're just doing a little, uh, a little curved element uh, the leading you down the hall to the to the bedrooms is is the only thing that's really happening here. Nice, just a little fun. So Where this, are the bedrooms? This is the first bedroom here, and goes to uh, this is the wall between the bedroom and the bath right here. And so, right, you'd have to go back out to get to the bathroom, come down the hall, and then here's the door for the bathroom. Here's the door for the back bedroom. Mm -hmm. This is all electric build, so that no fossil fuels will be burned during the lifetime of this home. If you put the solar panels up, right? right. Now you're covering all the energy demands of the home year round with solar plus a battery. This is like, if you do net zero urban infill, here's what you get. Now, then we get come back to that question is of okay, how do we keep doing that? It's one thing to do it on a pilot build with some grant money. It's another thing to stamp out a bunch of them uh, in, in the city. But that's where our dialogue has to go next with the city and, uh, and, and city council and the state at large. Like, hey, how can we modify our policies and our funding priorities so that we build back in these neighborhoods in a way that we're uh, being uh, respectful for the, the climate situation. Absolutely. Construction method, are you actually 3D printing this on site or are these actually being kind of brought from somewhere else? Mm -hmm. I would say uh, the world of 3D printed houses, even though it's a nascent industry, there's hardly any of them. There's maybe a hundred in the world, maybe a dozen in the US. Mm -hmm. Most of the attention goes around the people who are 3D printing on site. Okay. And we could do that. So far, we're printing these as big, giant pieces of wall uh, in our factory just four miles away in uh, Corktown, mm -hmm. and then bringing them to the site. 
And I think both will continue to be a viable method. Absolutely. Of all the people in the ecosystem, Michigan State Housing and Development Authority, the state of Michigan itself, has a very good appreciation for the size of the problem. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for solutions. So uh, they're, they, they really you know, want us to come up with something special.